And now, Luis Granjon yes. will present the uh, amazing things behind the OEM. She is lead developer at Ulule. A big round of applause for her. Thank you. So hello everybody. Uh, today we're going to talk, well I'm going to talk about uh, like the ORM and databases, mostly PostgreSQL, so sorry for the MySQL developers here, uh, and uh, performances prob performance problems. First I'm going to introduce myself, so uh, I'm Louise and I'm the lead developer at Ulule. Uh, it's a crowdfunding company in France. We also have offices in Barcelona and Roma and Montreal. And I'm a Django developer and a really enthusiastic Postgres uh, developer too. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and I'm, so I'm Louise Meta. So to start with the subject on RM and databases, I'm going to talk a little bit about a work that we did in my company recently. Uh, we decided to spend basically a month and a half working on performance. And that's kind of for me like telling to a kid it's candy for dinner tonight. So I was really happy about it, and after a month of work, we, we released like, all the new infrastructure, and we had a lot of migration and everything. It went really well, and our uh, performance dropped, like the, response, the average response time dropped from 130 to 70 milliseconds. So we were really happy about it, and we started to work on the API. And one of my colleagues came to me and told me, well, I have a problem, I have a, a, like an endpoint that is really slow, like it's taking four seconds to, to load. And I'm go kind of going to talk about how we dealt with that problem. Because there are two problems. First, yes, it took four seconds, and four seconds is really too low, uh, too slow. But the other problem is that um, the, the way of solving the problem wasn't clear. He did not have any idea of how to get into like, what was going on behind the, the code. So how did we end up with that? So the first question that I'm going to answer is how did we end up with, perf how do, do we end up as developers with performance problems on our platforms? And um, the second question after that is how could we try to know that we're going to have performance problems without having to guess or to count on our fingers well, how long am I waiting? Well, one, two, three, four, well, that's a kind of long time. So how, do ha how can we really be sure that our code is robust in terms of performance? And once we know that, uh, how, what can we do? Because it's really nice and if you have a DBA in your company and you're saying, oh yeah, we have performance problem, but I knew it would happen, you won't be happy. So how can we do something when we are developing? So the first question is, how do we end up with performance problems? So I often go to PostgreSQL, conf PostgreSQL conferences and they are full of angry DBAs always telling me, oh, you, you developers are awful, you're always using ORMs. And I try to explain that to them that it's not that awful, that 90% of the time it's enough for what we do and we only need to know well, when to stop using it and what's going on behind it to be able to build a good website. So the common problem would be that maybe the, you, you don't know what queries uh, are executed by the ORM. And uh, the second is that maybe some queries are really slow and you don't know, well, we don't know how to optimize them or if they are optimized or not because sometimes I don't have the time to look into it. So how can we catch these performance problems? without having to guess or to count on our fingers how many seconds we're waiting. So there are, I think like the important thing is actually to look into your logs and to look what is happening on your database site. And for that, I would like to talk about basically three big um, solutions. The first one is maybe the most popular, is the Django debug, debug toolbar. It allows you to, in your templates, to see the queries executed and uh, to see the explain that I'm going to talk about later. Uh, it's really nice, but if you're using Ajax or if you have a single page up or if you're, using, uh, if you're working on an API, 
uh, you won't see all of the queries. So it can be not enough. The other solution is uh, called Django Dev Server. Um, it's, uh, it's basically going to, lo to log all of your queries into your run server. It's good because uh, you won't miss anything. And the last solution is the one I'm going to talk about. It's just simply look into your database logs. And why I chose this, solu choose this solution in my everyday life is because uh, when I work on several uh, different projects, I like to not have to think of, well, how should I configure this project? So that's, for me, the most simple thing, but maybe uh, it's not clear where to find your logs. And so uh, I would also just like to say that uh, there are a lot of things written here, but I'm going to share the slides afterwards, so don't worry. So to know where your logs are in uh, your database, like you have to go into PSQL uh, with your user and your database name, and uh, you're going to be in your uh, PSQL interface. The first common line is show log directory. It will show you, well, the <coughs> folder where your logs are written. So these logs are in the PG log in this case. And after that, I look at uh, the data directory, show data direct directory. Um, so your logs are going to be in this user local var progress PG log. That's the full path. And the log file name will give you how well the name of the, of the file uh, PostgreSQL uses. So the idea is to have uh, all of your logs and uh, the timing of your queries. That's kind of really important if you're trying to look into what query is really slow. So for that, I use this, uh, this um, con uh, configuration. Uh, so here you can see where your, the, config, the configuration file is. And you can modify and uh, put this log name, uh, log statement, all. It's like basically log everything. I want to know everything. Uh, and the log min, my min duration statement will, uh, to zero, will uh, show you the duration of all your logs. So um, now the question is, now you have your logs and you have your Django code. And you kind of need to match them because otherwise, well, it's kind of useless. So for that, I'm going to use an example. And this example is the one I'm, that I'm going to use for during this entire conference. And uh, I created uh, a little bit, a little database with alls and jo that have jobs. So I have 10,000 alls in a database and seven jobs, uh, in a table and seven jobs. And uh, so alls have a name, an employer name, a heather color, and a, a feather color, sorry, a favorite food, and a job. And so, let's say, for example, I have this query, and I'm kind of wondering, OK, where is it executed? Well, Django uses, like, it's really simple when you think about it. Your Django will only execute the query when it actually needs it. So it will, uh, for example, in this case, I have this uh, select where, uh, like, from my table all, where my employer name is Ulul. And here, in my view, I, I look, and in the context, I put this query. But I don't use the, my, obj my old objects. I only use it in the context. So the, the, the query will be executed at this point. But here, it's actually uh, executed. Like I do a loop, and I do something. I don't really know what, but I do a loop. And so at this moment, because it's going to need the all from in this loop, it's going to execute the query. So you can, your queries can be executed in your templates, in your views, in your form, according to when you actually need the object. So my, the method that I use in my everyday life is uh, for, if I, I look at my query, and I'm thinking, OK, this is the table it's going, trying to re, uh, retrieve rows from. So which, what, which model is it linked to? And I find the model, and I have my table, so I know what model it is. So here it will be maybe my old model. 
And so I'm looking into my view and into uh, my form and wondering at what point am I actually doing something like a query set on this model. And after that, the last question is, when do I actually use the object? And like with this method that I, I think is for me like the simple one, simplest one, I always find out where my queries come from. So now we know where our logs are and where in our code the, the, code, the, the queries are executed and what does it change in our everyday life. And that's where I'm kind of uh, going to talk about the example that I, I was giving earlier in my company. So I think that the two most common things that we encounter as developers is, uh, well, I have a lot of queries often on only one table, and I don't know why the, it's doing that. And the other common problem is I have one query that is really slow, and I don't understand what's happening. So. To answer the first question, I think that we have to be, as developers, really careful about loops. Because uh, if you're looping and calling a, like a foreign object, it's going to do a query each time. So my first advice would be to use the, your context. Uh, it doesn't really have to do with uh, the, uh, the loop. But it's more like it will be easier for you to find out where your queries come from if you have a clean context with all your queries set in, that, in there. And uh, the other thing is to preload stuff. Use prefetch related and select related. Prefetch related is for many to many or foreign keys, uh, but select related is for foreign key. So, for example, here, if I'm not uh, doing a select related or a prefetch related, in this loop, I'm going to call my job table each time I encounter, like I do the, the loop, you know. So if I have a thousand uh, alls, I'm going to do it a thousand times. Well, in the meantime, if you have a thousand times, a thousand alls in your query set, that's not really good. But, uh, and, uh, but here, if I select related, I only have one query. So why? The difference between select related and prefetch related on the database side is actually your queries. Uh, select related will do a join, but uh, prefetch related will do two queries, one on your um, table, like on your model table, and one on the related table. There's very, it all depends on your situation. Usually for foreign key, we tend to use uh, like a select related, but sometimes you will find that your doing a join can be really expensive. And so you might prefer prefetch related, but that's, there's no magical uh, solution to know which one to choose. And that's why I'm going to talk about explain. So it's the case where one of your queries is really slow and you need to know what's happening because it could take three seconds and you don't know why. So what is explain? Explain, uh, it's, uh, it works for uh, MySQL and PostgreSQL. That's not a PostgreSQL thing. The specific thing about PostgreSQL is the analyze. But explain will give you the ex execution, execution plan chosen by the query planner when you query stuff in your database. When you use Analyze uh, with PostgreSQL, it will actually execute the query and give you uh, metrics like the actual time of execution and uh, the numbers, the real numbers of rows that you're going to have at the end of your query. If you're using it on a delete or an update or a create, you can roll back. So don't worry if your insert or delete is really slow. It's not because you're using analyze that it's definite and yeah. So I was talking about the query planner. The query planner is uh, what is going to generate various execution plans, calculate the cost of each of these plans, and choose the best one to execute your query. So what does it look like? Let's say I'm still working my, on my old website. And I'm trying to get, again, the goals that are working for Ululi. And I have this query, but it's weirdly slow. So I'm doing what I said. I'm doing an explain. And the first time we as developers see this, well, I, at least I saw this, 
I was like, okay, what I can see is some letters, some numbers, and meh, some things that look like my table's name, but you know, not really clear. So let's go step by step into what, what your database is trying to tell you there when it's just saying some sex can cost blah, blah, blah. So the first is the cost. The cost uh, is the first one that you can see, our uh, cost equals number, a number and another number. The first is the cost of retrieving the first row. And the second one is the cost of retrieving all the rows. The rows, the number of rows are the numbers that were, will be returned. And the average, and the width is the average size uh, width of a row in bytes. If you use analyze, you will have the actual timeline. And you have the loops. The loop is a really important parameter because it tells you how many times it will have to execute this uh, thing called sequential scan, sex scan here, for example, but it can be other things too. Um, and so, what does it mean when it says sex scan? It's sequential scan, and uh, it's uh, when you're to execute your query, we're scanning the entire database and looking at the row that, that match your where clause. It can be really slow if your database is super big. Like if uh, you have a million rows, you can imagine that going through each row can take long. So maybe in my case, I would need an index. So what is an index then? Uh, I did not know Marcus was going to talk about, about that. So I'm gonna be like really quick. Um, basically the idea, I would say that if you have a hard time remembering what an index looks like, you should maybe think about an encyclopedia. Uh, if you're trying to uh, read an encyclopedia and it's a, like an encyclopedia about birds and you want to know which page, like wh where it talks about owls, you're not gonna read the entire thing and note where you found the word owl. You're gonna go to the index, look at where owls are, you're gonna have Page, pages number, and you're gonna look into these pages. The idea for a database index is exactly the same. You're gonna have values, and you're gonna have pointers to the rows that match the value. So now I created my index on employer name colon. And now I can see that uh, this query now has a different execution plan. It's using an index scan. So the index is visited row by row, by row uh, and it's uh, visiting the pointers related to the matching values. But let's imagine I this time want the olds that are working at the post office. It's a really common job for olds. And I have, I have 7,000 olds working at the post office. And suddenly I, I, I look into it and I, I do the same thing, I, I do explain, and there it's using a sequential scan again. Why? What the hell happened? I I'd created an index, it should be quick now. Well, first, if you're trying to retrieve 7,000 rows in the one time, maybe there's a problem there, but why is it using, again, a sequential scan? So the index scan uses the order of the index uh, and the head moves between the rows pointed by your, your index. Move, you have to know that moving the read head of your database is a thousand times slower than just reading the next physical block. So again, if that's not really clear, let's take again the example of the encyclopedia. Let's imagine this time you're trying to look everywhere in your birds uh, encyclopedia where it's talking about birds. And if you go to your index, and look at all the pages number and just jump between the, the pages, it will be slower than just reading the entire thing. That's the same with a database. So for a common value, it's quicker to read all the data in physical order. And so this time I'm trying to look at the holes, work holes working for at Hogwarts. I have 2000 holes working there. It's a little bit less common than uh, post office, but still. And it's using something called a bitmap hip scan. It sounds a little bit uh, weird, uh, kind of magical, but we're talking about Hogwarts, so that's why. So what is a bitmap hip scan? 
So the difference between the index scan is the index will use uh, the index order. The bitmap hip scan, in order to move the, like, the, 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 your database is super slow, so it's trying to do the least work possible, so moving the, the, the reading head, like, the, the least possible. So it's going to order uh, your index in the physical order. And uh, the, you, so you, the moving head won't have to move that much. So we have three types of scan. Uh, the sequential scan, the index scan, and the bitmap hip scan. And so now let's talk about join because we do that a lot if you're using selectively related or perfect related select. Well. So now let's uh, use a select related on job. Here I can see that it's doing something called a nested loop. The nested loop is like the easiest algorithm ever, ever when you think about joins. It's that. Basically, it's going to go uh, through every row and look at uh, every row in your, in, in your other table and look if it matches. That's really simple, but it's like two for loops. Uh, if you think about it in really like Python code, it's two, in, uh, two loops nested, so it can be really slow. So, uh, yes, an another thing, yes, it, it's of course used for little tables. So if you have like a table with like seven thing in it, maybe it's not that bad to have a nested loop, don't worry. But let's take for uh, this example, I, I, I'm retrieving all the alls that have a job ID bigger than one, and I'm select related. And now it's using what is called a hash join. The idea of behind a hash join is that it's going to create a hash table, uh, and the hash table will, ha will have a hash key that will be ordered, and it will, have, uh, it will point to the rows corresponding to the value. So the work will be much lower to join stuff because it will be ordered in the hash table. Uh, it's f also for small tables because the hash table has to fit in memory. So if you have big table, it will like be a, you have will have cost problems. And if you're joining on really big tables like this time, I'm j just taking all my alls and and select relating the, their job. And it's using what's called a merge join. The merge join will sort the two tables and will uh, will join this way. So it's used for big tables, and if you use an index, uh, it it will ha avoid s having to sort the data, the the tables. So that's good. Just a little bit of a note: uh, merge join and hash join are actually used in uh, are actually used in PostgreSQL, but not in MySQL. And so the last part will be about order bytes. Uh, so yeah, quick uh, sum up: we have nested loop, hash join, and merge join. So order by. So let's say you, I order by job ID and favorite food uh, to help, like the like the, the lunch lady at Hogwarts or something. Um, so I'm ordering, and it's using a sort and sort key. So here the problem is that uh, your ordering your entire database, and everything has to be sorted into memory, which is why you have a memory that is uh, 1,166 kilobytes. It's a, little it's a little table, but in real life it can be really costly, so you should be careful in terms of memory when you see a sort this way. But if you use an order by, still I don't have any indexes on this job ID favorite food. Suddenly, you can see that the memory is 25 kilobytes to order, and I'm using uh, like a sort method that is a top and hip sort. So, what's happening exactly this time? Why is my memory like so much lower? So, what is to top and hip sort? A hip is a sort of tree, and when it's uh, using a limit, the hip will have a limited size. So, it if for each row in your, in your table, it will go, and if the, if the tree isn't full, it will just add it at the right place. And if it's not, if, it's, uh, if your tree is full, 
it will look, well, is the value that I'm comparing smaller than any of the one in the, in the tree? If it's the case, it will pop the last value and, and insert the new one at the right place. So I'm going to give like a little bit uh, of an example. So for example, here I'm, uh, I'm ordering uh, my, my alls by employer name. And for the 10 first iteration of my top and hip search, it's just like fooling the, the hips. But at the 11, I'm, I, the 11th value is post office. It's not smaller than any of the one in it. But the 12th value, Alman, is smaller. So it's popping, Harry, it's popping Potter, which would make ha Voldemort really happy. But, uh, and it's inserting Haman in it. And now I'm using an index. I, I decided that, well, OK, I actually maybe need an index on this. And in this case, I'm actually using the index order. So that's really simple. So you should always be careful about order by. Um, it's, if you don't have a limit or an index, it can really be heavy in terms of memory, as I said at, uh, during like the sort key. Um, and you might need an index, but you, you have to use explain to be sure where you need an index, actually. So the conclusion is that uh, I feel like in my everyday uh, developer life, looking at my database logs helped me build a website that has good performance. Uh, it helps me know when I have a problem and, uh, and solve my, um, these cases that I can, I can encounter. So it's always also important to not have surprise query from somewhere you don't know. So always know where your queries come from. Be careful about loops and if you have a slow query, just use explain and it should help you understand what's going on in this weird world that is the database. I don't think we have thank, time. Okay. Thank you, Luis. We have time for one question. Uh, thanks, great talk. Uh, I have a question not directly related to the talk, but as, as an expert in, in uh, <laughs> Postgres, I mean, do you ever come into a situation where you rather have a MongoDB or the likes, <laughs> or you solve everything with Postgres? Um, I don't use MongoDB, and I, I'd prefer not to go into a trolling session now. Uh, <laughs> Um, but Postgres I, does everything. No, can but, do everything. No, but for example, we in, uh, at Ulul we use a Redis cache. Because sometimes, you, like if if your query is not going to change, you don't with new, you don't need to query it every time to your database. So we use Redis for that, and uh, for full text search, I, I used for uh, PostgreSQL for full text search uh, in my current database. The no, not database, uh, company. Sorry, we use uh, we use Elasticsearch, but uh, you can also. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Louise, and...